Good morning, everyone. That's my pleasure to be there uh, today. And uh, today I will talk about my... Um, uh, I will give my experience about uh, building a new database from scratch. Uh, everything started from, uh, uh, from four years ago, mostly when I started to fork CouchDB. And at some point, uh, uh, forking CouchDB uh, was becoming painful, so I decided to rewrite from scratch. A new database. Uh, modern database no longer. Sorry for the quality of the slides right now. Uh, these are PDF because uh, iCloud failed for me. I lost my slides on sc my keynote slides, and this is why uh, replication is hard actually. And I hope it gave me another reason to to finish the work um, of Barrel. So just to quickly introduce myself, uh, I'm Benoit Cheneau. I'm craftsman working now since 20 years mostly on P2P solutions and uh, building for customer custom data endpoints. It uh, can be custom database, can be custom index solution, etc. Uh, I'm only doing open source for a living, so every, everything of my work is open source at the point. Uh, everything is generally sponsored by customers, uh, so and generally I'm uh, while I'm delivering the customers, the code is also open source at the time. Uh, it depends. Uh, NK Multimedia is my corporate interface. Uh, I'm sort of owner of that uh, company. And uh, my company and me um, have become a uh, member of the Along User Group, uh, which is a group of uh, industrials uh, that are working right now. Our main goal is to build that new Along Foundation. Uh, that we work on the ecosystem and make sure that um, any language built on top of Erlangs like Elixir, FNA, um, LFE, uh, and, and other Luer, etc., uh, would be uh, sustainable and can be uh, somehow to 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 increase. And um, so, uh, why Barrel? Uh, why I started to fork uh, CouchDB and why I. Um, I decided to create Barrel. Because, uh, the first thing is I wanted something versatile, you know, versatile, I I able to accept any kind of um, document to, uh, to any kind of content in, um, in my database, being able to index anything I want to, and being able to switch the transaction model when I want to. If I want something uh, eventually consistent, uh, I, I, want it, I want to be able to make it. If I want something, uh, uh, if I just want to put uh, a data and just forget, uh, it can be stored, persisted or not, just like for messaging, uh, I want to be able to do that. And this is why I started to build Barrel. And um, also, uh, this is a sure thing. I don't know any uh, company share use in, it, in its business that is, using, that is not using a custom database. This is why uh, some are paying that so much expensive consultant for Oracle or SAP. Um, and microservices uh, and um, my messaging platforms are all built, uh, are all created to make some custom interface or custom indexing solution on top of some database. And I also wanted a simple solution to bring the data near you because when you're building a microservice, you don't want to query all the time th that database at some point. That database can be kind of lines. And uh, there is a sure thing today, there are a lot of, uh, more and more people uh, using that mobiles. And you really want a solution that is able to um, put your data on your mobile that you will be, that you let you query that large data sets, but um, obviously you won't replicate the, uh, the one terabyte of data on your mobile. So you want just to replicate to some part of the data being able to work on your data on your on your mobile, uh, maybe becoming offline, and when you come online, uh, just go back on the large cluster of data. Uh, so Barrel is a modern database. Uh, this is right now orient document oriented because I started like this. Uh, with time and attachments, uh, meaning that you're able to um, get the, all the change in the database in quite uh, in soft real times. 
and uh, you can attach any things, can be links, uh, can be, can be uh, blobs, to that document, just like you can do to, uh, to a mail. Uh, this is distributed on, but uh, local first, I will explain that later. Uh, it's built uh, in a way to, to that you can view uh, your data, that you can retrieve a, a set of data, a, a small set of data in your application if you want to. Um, automatic indexing uh, for two reasons. Uh, I don't want to care about having to to know what I want to index because my data can change. Um, I don't know. As some experiments, some of you are working. On, if you are working on a database uh, on an application, over the time your data model will change, and some are used to create mi migration tests, etc. Stuff like this, where uh, I do think that rather than trying to migrate. Just keep the good data in your database because you don't want to delete that, and you don't want that very dangerous uh, migration steps where you can lost uh, your, your 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 data. You just want to augment your data model and uh, and access it over the time, and this is what automatic indexing gave you. And focus on simplicity uh, because I I still want to manage it, uh, and I want to manage it with a small team, but. Um, and also because simplicity is a key for resilience. You don't want the complex systems under the rules because the complex system is what uh, makes you uh, very complicated, uh, make uh, any debugging uh, complicated. And uh, this is why, after all, all are going to microservice somehow. Uh, storing document, the document is just a map. Uh, actually, JSON, uh, when, you, you, when you're going through the HTTP um, uh, Interface of parallel, or it can be your maps in Erlang or anything in your language until you're able to query and to discuss with the parallel nodes. And, um, sorry, yes. And um, uh, this is, um, you have replications, so this is master master replications, which only means that there is no. Uh, dependency by default between nodes on, on uh, when you want to replicate the data, all nodes are equal, so you can do uh, you can replicate your data to and you, you can replicate your data from a node, and the other node can do the same, and you can do both at the same time if you want to. And uh, uh, the replications are also these uh, properties that you can replicate just a subset of the, of your data. So uh, you don't have to replicate all your data, and if you want, for example, on your phone, you can just replicate a, a small data set uh, from, uh, from your large cluster. And uh, this is what I'm calling a full peer-to-peer -peer model. So there is no discovery in the community version of Bar, in the open source version of Parallel right now. Uh, everything you are, you are launching standalone nodes, and you can start replication tasks. And as the graph says, you can say uh, you can create any topology that, uh, you, that you want to create. So if you want a, um, uh, a system of follower, meaning you have a node on which you are creating contents and some other nodes that are following that node, replicating full all the data or just a partial view of the data, you can do it. You can chain replication also. Uh, if you want, for example, for customers, uh, what we are building is you have that small node in memory that is in your applications, uh, replicating the data to a larger node on the disk, uh, very near, uh, very near the, that uh, w uh, microservices. This is for the temporary persistence. And for cold data, we are replicating everything to a, large cl a larger cluster. And, that's, uh, and you're able to do that uh, with the replication. A uh, partial view is exactly about that, so uh, giving a subset of your data from uh, a cluster of nodes to one node to the other nodes, or from one cluster to another cluster. Anything you want to, and uh, you can constrain that in, uh, depending on the query you want to, to, to make on your data and the query you want to replicate for, the, for uh, on uh, locally. Uh, this is uh, how actually works like stuff like Hadoop uh, when they are doing map reduce. If you want to to make your calculation fast, you want your data near uh, the calculation, and this is exactly uh, what we are trying to do. That yeah. And to give a concrete example, uh, imag imagine that you have two offices, one in Paris and one uh, one in Tokyo, and uh, and both. Um, 
offices are working all together and they are replicating all together the data. Uh, but for, uh, for some backups reasons, they also are replicating to the cloud. And this is uh, what you can do. You can do um, a push pull. You can set up a push pull replication between the two offices. The same between the cloud and set up a replication between cloud to uh, to each office. Um, all the data are coming through that uh, chain of replication, uh, and you don't care about conflicts because they are uh, already solved. And it would actually save saved my keynotes, I guess. And um, agnostic indexing, because we are indexing map uh, or JSON, imagine that you, your map, your JSON, is just a tree of data. So what we are indexing there, we are flattening your JSON and indexing the path. So after that, we just have a large graph of documents inside the, uh, inside the barrel. And when you query some data, uh, we are looking for the shortest path to guess uh, the the data from your query mostly, and um, and everything is indexed by default. We are indexing any path in the database. Uh, some are indexing by value, some are indexing by hash, depending on what you want to. So uh, if you want to um, to get uh, the uh, Germany country and location, you are querying for the location um, uh, yeah location country path. Uh, Germany, and it will get all the documents uh, corresponding to that uh, country. And you can, of course, uh, merge, etc. things. Um, I decided, uh, because I started like this uh, when I was working in CouchDB, I decided to make it uh, to make the database in Erlangs. So why Erlangs? Because this is a very minimalist language. I Never understand when people are, ask, uh, are talking about me about the syntax, the complexity of the syntax, because this is just 20 uh, words to, to, to learn in your language. And then uh, you are just putting functions. So this is very, a very minimalist language, uh, but uh, with native concurrency. And uh, by native concurrency, I mean uh, it's really designed for the resilience. Uh, and when we, uh, when I'm saying design for the resilience, is, this is with that motto, uh, let it crash. So I know that some people are not liking that motto, uh, but let it crash is exactly about that. This is like these parents uh, letting their kids fall on the ground and, and just uh, trying to help them to quickly um, stand up right after. And um, and the rest of the time supervise them, and this is what exactly what uh, Erlang VM is giving to you. So uh, let it crash means that you have that function working in the process, and rather than trying to catch it, we just want it to let it crash very fast because uh, very fast because then we are uh, you are able to relaunch it very fast too, and um, and for the case when you don't want when you want some kind of uh, resurrection of your process or your functions, then, uh, then you can use the supervision. And supervision is about grouping process and having a strategy of resurrection. So if you, have, if you want uh, to have temporary process, meaning if they crash, they crash. We don't really try to, to, to resurrect them, then uh, that's okay. If you want to have a transient process, transient process in your groups, meaning you um, uh, in bad case, you are trying to, to, to relaunch them. Uh, in normal exit, you don't try to relaunch them. Uh, you can do also that. And pattern matching. Pattern matching is not only useful uh, for uh, having a way to, to catch your, your response and to, to make some case about that. But this is also very useful for the resilience. Uh, for example, instead of trying, uh, like many languages are, are doing, is instead of using a try-catch uh, loop um, when you are connecting to a socket, we just try to connect, and if we crash, then uh, the supervisor will do something. Maybe, uh, maybe you have too much load on your node, and it won't try to, 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 to relaunch immediately. It will it try to back off, to do a back off slip, and retry later. Um, maybe it will just uh, stop any connection at that node, etc. Where in your try-catch uh, um, uh, loops, you need to uh, you need to put some hooks in your language, and most of the time, if you forget if you forgot a try and catch, you won't have the error. It will be hidden by your try-catch uh, things, uh, like in Python. 
So uh, this is why in Python they are saying uh, they are telling to you to not to, to do too much um, exception, to not use too much exception. This, this is because you want to to recover the error and do something more useful than uh, just uh, catching that case. Um, so Barry's in Erlangs, it can be embedded in any Erlang apps, just like uh, many other applications for those who know in Erlangs. Um, the interest of that is that you can build your own application, you can build your microservices, and having a bar in fully in memory on your microservices, replicating to some persistence node uh, later, because parallel can also be launched as a, pers as a standalone node uh, that you can access it via HTTP or the Erlang distribution uh, level. Um, so the requirements are there. Now there are a lot of problems to solve also. Um, and the first one is uh, the complexity of uh, building a database by itself. Because the database is stateful. And, uh, and um, because of that, because we had that process isolated uh, between each other, so I forgot to talk about that. In Erlangs, because we have actor keeping all the states and only uh, and, and the only way to discuss between uh, the Erlangs process is uh, by passing message. Uh, what happened? Uh, how do you pass a stateful database between all your process? This is the question that we need to and uh, to answer. And a database also uh, it's stateful, yes, but your queries are not. For each queries, uh, you can return different results, and this is something to to uh, to, to solve too. And um, you have also different expectation. Uh, when I'm uploading that document, uh, should I expect it's already available when I get it uh, right after my write, or maybe I can assume that it will be written sometimes after. And this is uh, the thing that you need to solve when you're writing a database. You have also some Erlang constraint, constraints, the one that I already talked, that um, processes are not uh, sharing anything. So uh, because they are not sharing anything, how do we pass that database state uh, between, uh, between different processes? How can I have um, multiple concurrent writes and multiple concurrent reads at the same time um, uh, with the actor model? Uh, also, something that you generally do when you are writing a database in C or, or Rust or whatever uh, is uh, that uh, you don't want to lock, obviously, your application. So most of the time, to not locking your, uh, your application, you are using um, integer, and you are doing atomic operation, plus one, minus one, on that, uh, that integer, integer. And when you change a value and check that value, this is very really atomic and meaning if the value change then you retry to 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 put your data and you can't you can't do that in Erlangs uh, because of the systems I mean you can do that but uh, then you will have global variable and it would only works uh, locally on your nodes when uh, the beauty of having an actor model is that your process can be on that machine but uh, for some reason you can decide to move that or to use a, another process on another machine, rather. Um, also, in Erlang's uh, I/O operations are slow, very slow. Uh, so some try to to build their own database using the full uh, file driver in um, in Erlang's like CouchDB. Uh, so even if CouchDB is slow and can be improved, uh, it's not enough. And also, you don't have any access to the low-level uh, file driver that you can have on any system that would allow you to optimize uh, any write, etc. Until you get NIFs, which are native interface in Erlangs and, and that, we will, that we are using in parallels to, um, uh, to bypass that constraint. So uh, decision, because we are in uh, actor model and because the stat, uh, state is very local to that process, uh, I decided to just use some small um, barrels, sm some small collections of data. Uh, a barrel is just a small container uh, that can be that have uh, its own storage on disk, and it handled mostly by one process at a time, and that can be moved from one machine to the other uh, if you want to. Um, yes. Uh, to handle conflicts during the application, for now I'm not using any vector clock because vector clock are good 
to to handle the, um, to to manage the causality. Uh, meaning, if uh, one write happened at that node uh, and another write happened at that other node, uh, I want to when I replicate that data on both nodes, I want to be able to to know when the update happened, so I can do something with that and, the, the, and, and solve the conflicts. Uh, but using vector clocks is very complicated when you are getting over 1,000 nodes, because you are increasing that vector clock. It's taking some time to process. It's taking some bandwidth also to dialogue between all, all vector clock, uh, even using dotted vector clock, where using a revision tree, which is just a hash um, just a, a tree uh, where we are storing hash of each revision of documents. So if you were to update the first one, it creates a revision one with an hash. And you update the second times, and it creates a second revision and hash it. Uh, if you have the same revision, if you have the same document created at the same time on another nodes, it will have the same hash. Uh, this can happen, for example, when uh, your, cli your mobile clients were writing to your server, but at some point was disconnected or, uh, or the load balancer disconnected it and balances to another node, and the write happened, for example, on the two nodes at the same time. Because this is the same document, then you will have the same revision at the same level, and then the conflict is solved because the document won't be replicated and, uh, and the causality is uh, assured. Also, this is a convergent, just like C uh, This is a convergent model. Uh, so um, the resolution of the conflicts by default in 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 Barrel is taking the longest branch of edits. So the more the branch that have the more edits. So I forgot to explain that. So once you create a conflict, it's creating a new branch based on that revision. This is what you, uh, you have two here. You have three ma two machines. Uh, one machine have um, creating a new revision uh, at the same time as the other one. And then you create, a each time you have a conflict, each time you are making an update on that branch, you, uh, on that uh, level, you are creating a new branch. And branch are replicating. And by default, uh, Barrel is taking the longest branch uh, to, to solve that, to, to be the winning uh, revision. And uh, if you want to solve it, uh, delete are uh, um, also replicated. And we keep a tombstone for that. And uh, delete always win. So this is a good way to solve a branch. If you want to remove that branch, uh, put that in delete and while uh, undo the uh, undo the update on the other branch, so it will have the longest uh, number of edition. Uh, indexing. This is one of the decisions. You have two modes right now in parallel. One is lazy. It's indexed uh, over the change when the database can. Uh, it's not indexed. Um, Immediately, so it means that if you are putting a data and you want to query, uh, eventually you will be able to query uh, the um, novelty, uh, but not uh, always. And consistent, uh, when you update, uh, when you put a new document, when you update a document, uh, the index is updated uh, immediately. Uh, the indexing supports uh, maps, uh, filter, chain operation based on paths, and that I already talked. And on top of that, you can build any query language you want to, uh, like if you want to, to build a SQL or stuff like this. So um, internal. Um, so like I said, the file driver in Erlang is very slow. And I just wanted to not uh, rebuild another um, B3 things or whatever when you have so much good solution today. Um, in uh, already available. So for now, I'm using RocksDB for the storage. Uh, I build a NIF, a native interface. So this is all C++ binded to Erlangs. Uh, this is built as a dot NIFs because you have two kinds of uh, native interface in Erlang, two kinds of binding. One is uh, you, are crea uh, you are creating that function in Erlangs, binding your C code. And you have to make sure that this doesn't block anything in your Erlangs uh, VM any user operation, so you are creating a pool of thread or stuff like this. Or you have this new feature in the new Erlangs, which are dot nifs, meaning that all your C code that you are doing will be automatically, automatically scheduled by uh, the, um, the Erlang VM. 
And uh, RocksDB is very optimized for SSD, and uh, this is exactly what uh, I wanted to to use. Um, so the model of concurrency right now used in uh, locally in Barrel, so that doesn't imply that you can can't build transaction on top on multiple nodes, but on on a local nodes, you have one single writer and multiple readers. So DB state is maintained by one process. All the writes happen on that process, just like in RocksDB on Postgres, on MySQL, etc. All the writes happen on one thread at a time, and this is that thread that is responsible of the write. Uh, you have the same things in uh, in um, in Barrel with some optimization we we'll see later. And then the last DB value is shared. Uh, so there are two ways to. There would be two ways to share that value between the reader processes. Uh, one is to pass message between a pool of readers that you are available, and when you are making a query, you will query one of that uh, process uh, that have a copy of your DB, uh, DB um, state, DB value. And, um, and uh, uh, the other one is to use ETS, which is the storage in memory in, um, in uh, uh, local storage mem in memory in Erlangs, which um, act. Uh, this is not a shared memory like some are saying. This is uh, working just like a process, but optimized to, to, to for the data exchange in memory between uh, processes. And uh, this is optimized for read and write concurrency and so on. And uh, yes, how do prevent delay job? Because obviously, having one uh, write process is a bottleneck. So um, in Erlang, you have the possibility to um, to select the message you want to receive and to block on that message for a time. Here we are. Uh, this is basically what is happening when we are waiting for when that write process is waiting for write is receiving batch of writes. Uh, add uh, that batch, uh, it try to receive that much. Obviously, it's more complicated because it has a limit on memory and stuff like this. And when it's achieved the limit, or it doesn't get anything um, after uh, after zero, uh, which is 200 milliseconds in Erlangs, uh, it will process the, uh, it will process the writes and uh, handle the other message. So doing that uh, means that you are able to uh, have multiple writes done at the same times and automatically on your notes uh, rather than you uh, in just waiting in the process queue uh, would make a large button like and crash at some point back pressure um, there is back pressure in um, in uh, in barrel every read and write uh, is done by one process so it means that we are able to stop that process pause that process crash that process if we want to um, uh, on the right queue, we are limiting on the maximum of writes, and um, and there is a threshold. Everything is configurable, so we can accept uh, as many writes we want to in the last um, uh, 500 milliseconds. And uh, we are not using a pool. Uh, we are not using a queue for that. Also, we are using we are short circuiting write and reads, so we can pause them uh, for a while. So, for example, if a write timeout, then and we have too much timeout, we decide to pause any other write that will come on that node. And also, we are able to check if something happened on the writer, and say uh, and says to the writer slow down, or says to the to the reader to slow down, etc. Things uh, all the tables are supervised using the along supervision. Go we'll fast on that. Uh, so yes, yeah, sorry. You have uh, that main supervisor, a DB supervisor, a storage supervisor. DB supervisor are supervising any write process where the storage, uh, the DB, the rock DB is uh, uh, supervised by itself. Um, we never read from all index value. We just append data, which makes things fast. We just appending message, and at some point we are making a snapshot, compacting and, and going first, just like event sourcing does. Uh, we have a process for indexing, lazy indexing. We have a process listening on DB update events using a simple process, a gen server or a gen event in Barrel. And, and that's all the things. I already said that. Uh, the replication is done by uh, listening on the change, and on any change, uh, we have a, that finish. Uh, the replication is done by a finished state um, process, a gen statum process, 
uh, that is also subject to back pressure. We have also some instrumentation, and the problem with instrumentation in Erlang is how not blocking your processes when you want to instrument that, uh, and uh, how you can, uh, because you've got to run out of process and run out of file descriptors. Uh, so how to make generics? Um, in Bar, you have a system of hooks. You can hook any um, metric system you want to. Uh, like uh, by default, you have Prometheus support. And for those who want to pay for the su uh, enterprise support in Barrels, you can also have access to the Erlang um, solution, uh, Wombat, which is an operational tool that allows you to operate uh, getting alarms and uh, metrics, et cetera, et cetera, on top of the your Erlang cluster. And I finished. So if you have any question, thank you. <laughs>